This is episode number 104 of the Homeowner Show. Whether you're a DIY or looking to hire, we're here to help you find the best information and options for you and your home. My name is Kevin Hackett, and here with me is Craig Williams. Hello, 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 and welcome to the Homeowner Show. We're glad that you could join us for part two of our episode with Takis. That is right. Number two. We were having so much fun, we just had to do it again. Yeah. Well, you know, sometimes you wind up doing a show, and you think, man, this is going to be really good. And then... It goes on and on and on. Well, because it's fun. Because we're having a good time. It was really good. And Great the, information. And we could have kept going, honestly. I mean, like we, we right. talked a little bit after the show when we, we got did. done recording this one. And uh, we, I mean, we, we did talk for longer. We yep. just didn't, we didn't capture it. We got some good stuff. We just didn't, we didn't record that. Yeah, no, we didn't. <laughs> but um, all that being said, I think that many of you who listened to last week's episode, you're like, man, I... I there's some other things that I wanted to know. Yeah. Well, guess what? Here's your that's, yeah. that's what this episode is going to be. So that's right. We're going to go ahead and, uh, and, and let you in there. But before we do that, we got a couple of things we want to want to talk about first. Yeah. Just, just real quick. We want to give a uh, really cool shout out to our new friend, Lauren Fox. Uh, I don't know. Is this, a, is this in shot? It is. Okay. So this is a coaster that he, uh, he sent to us with a, a little, little note on the back. That's just for us. You can't see that. Um, <laughs> but, uh, it's, it's our logo on a coaster. And, uh, next week we'll actually show you the big sign that he sent us that he made for us. Super, super cool. Lauren Fox. Uh, I don't know if we don't have a link. I don't know if he has like an Etsy shop. Lauren, if you have an Etsy shop or, or something like that, let us know what it is so that we can put the links in the show notes. So if people want to go, you know, get something printed on wood and this is like cut it's like textured yeah super super cool and we'll, we'll show you the sign uh next week um but really really cool we got to talk to him online uh and he's he's doing some really really neat stuff so uh thank you lauren that's right well listen uh thanks for tuning into the show today we're gonna go ahead and uh, let you in on the second half of our conversation the part two of our conversation with takis thanks for downloading the show enjoy yeah, so I guess the next logical question here is what what makes one router better than the other? Because there's so many things on the market and and you talk to so many different people and they're going to say, "Hey, go with this one, go with that one." And I'm going to tell you every time, you know, if you if you have a a large house, go with the mesh system. Um and people that may not know what that means is basically um you've got a router but then there's uh, other access points that you put in your home and you don't have to switch um, what, what's called an SSID, which is just basically your network name. You don't have to switch network names in order to go to a different device in your home and, and have connectivity. So it it's true full, full house expandable options, but maybe you don't need that. Maybe you have Maybe you have the option of putting the router in the very middle of your home and, and you can use something that's not quite as expensive. And maybe you only need one router instead of a mesh system. It has multiple access points. Um, so, so the question becomes, what makes one router better than the other then? Uh, <laughs> it's another tough question because there's a, a very long winded technical answer to that. <laughs> uh, um, and, and, you know, I'll try to come up with with, with, with some uh, better analogies uh, than what I've come up with so far. <laughs> uh, but you know, in, in summary, the the hardware inside is um, they're different. Uh, wireless. So one thing to keep in mind is. And I'll come back to, the, to to answer that in a second, but I, I think I might preface the answer with wireless works like sound. It, it is sound. It, it's just sound that we can't hear. Yeah. Um, and you think about if you and I were inside your home having a conversation in the middle of your living room, we don't have to talk very loud. We hear each other very well. And we continue the conversation and I walk down the hall upstairs and go into a closet and close the door. I can't hear you. You can't hear me very well. Right. Right. That's how wireless works. It, it, it works just like sound. So the more walls you have, the more 
wireless devices you have uh, that are that are also making noise. I mean, think about this. Think about it this way. Um, again, I'm in your living room having a conversation with you. We can speak very clearly and we hear each other. Don't have to talk very loud. Then all of a sudden, we get transplanted in the middle of a, a, a heavy metal concert with everyone yelling. You and I can't hear each other very well. That's what happens whenever you have more wireless devices within your home that are all yelling at the same time with noise. So all those things you have to consider, and that's why the mesh systems work so well, is that you don't have a single device uh, that's, that's talking back and forth to your other devices. You kind of spread that out. Um, but, you know, what makes, kind of circling back to what makes uh, one device better than another, it's the uh, components that are inside of it, the number of antennas, the... Um, uh, using the, the voice and sound analogy, how loud they are, um, how uh, how well they can hear. Um, and again, I feel like I'm saying this more than more than I should. I hope this is kind of making sense because I I can't think of many other analogies. But uh, other than you have to think that you know wireless devices they communicate via sound that we can't hear, and the better devices can hear better. And yell louder. You kind of get what you pay for, don't you? Yes. Yeah, I mean, like, my, I'll just give you an example. My 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 Eero mesh system. Uh, it's a it's the Eero Pro router with two with two beacons that you can plug into other places in your house. So basically, there's three access points. It's like four hundred dollars. So it's it's not it's not cheap to get that system. Uh, that's today. Now it may be, you know, depending on when you're listening to this, it could be, it could be less expensive in the future. But um, you could also go buy a um, hundred dollar router, or maybe even eighty dollar router, and would it do the job? Well, it it all kind of depends. And I think one of the things that people need to kind of determine is what do they need out of their router. I mean. For Craig and for me, when we've got children at home, we need some filters and we need the the option to uh, to lock down or pause our internet or to um, you know put content filters and um, you know so that you know our children don't get to things that they don't need to be getting to. Um, certain certain routers give you the opportunity to lock some certain parts of the internet down where others don't necessarily give you that option. So. You know, knowing your family and knowing um, the way your internet is being used, I think makes a big difference in which router is going to be the right one for you. So it's not a blanket answer, um, but you you do. You get what you pay for. If you find a cheap router and someone tells you it's great, well, they're probably wrong, <laughs> frankly. Yeah, I, I would agree with that. I mean, up to a certain point, you know, um, I can say that uh, I have – uh, worked with some commercial or enterprise, quote unquote, enterprise grade uh, wireless devices, wireless access points, and um, they weren't really any better than some others that were much more uh, economically priced. But I, I can say that if you go out to and, and buy you know something off Amazon for fifty or sixty dollars, I would say the range between. Fifty dollars and five hundred dollars, you you absolutely uh, get what you pay for within that range. You go over and above the five hundred mark, um, you're paying for a name, you're paying for marketing. You're really not getting much for your money over and above that. Um, right. But uh, it, you know, so that, that that would be my two cents. And I can say that uh, we have had. Uh, just like yourself, Kevin, we've had a many, many, many clients that have uh, have raved about uh, the Eero Pro mesh system. You know, it's not cheap, but it's a set it and forget it. You know, you buy it, and you're done. Yeah. Um, and you don't have to worry. Wireless becomes a non-issue at that point. It does. Yeah. And 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 there's some really cool things that I can do with my phone. Like I'm I'm 30 miles away from my house right now. And if I want to pause the internet at my house, I can do it. And, uh, you know, that's a, that's a nice little feature. I mean, 
that, you know, we, Craig and I talk about, about family life quite a bit and how important our families are. And, you know, you can set your internet to work at certain times and to not work at, at other times. And you can really, you can, with the Eero, I can see every single device that is on my, on my internet um, router, on my router that's connected. And I can set each one of them to a different profile. And each one of those profiles can have their own content filters. So, you know, if I want, if I want my daughter to have, uh, you know, if I want their, her internet to shut down at eight o'clock at night, but I want my sons to shut down at six o'clock at night, I can do that. And it doesn't come back on until I tell it to. So there are a lot of things that you have the ability to do with some of these um, systems that others don't give you the ability to do. Now, now some people are going to listen to this and go, look, it's just me and my, it's my husband and my wife and, or whatever. It's just two of us living at home and we don't really do anything but watch TV and answer phone calls. Well, maybe you don't need all of that stuff, but kind of knowing who you are and what you need in your house. I think that kind of goes to what speeds you need, you know, all that kind of stuff. But um, yeah, all of it kind of plays into how you're using what it is that you have. And that's going to determine, you know, what you need, you know? And, yep. and how, yeah, I mean, go, going back to your analogy about the, you know, you being, being in your house and then, and then moving over to the rock concert, um, if I'm, if I'm understanding what you're talking about, you know, move, moving over to like the rock concert, it doesn't necessarily mean that just because you're logged in to that Wi-Fi network doesn't mean that the other networks around you aren't creating noise. So you don't necessarily have to be logged right. into those networks in order for them to be, you know, deterring your speed and, and slowing things down and making noise that they're, they're still there, especially in these neighborhoods where these, these houses are, you know, are, are so close together. Is it, 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 am I hearing that right? Yeah, yeah, you are. I mean, um, kind of to add to that, you know, people living in apartment homes or condominiums or yeah. townhomes, yeah. uh, they have a lot of wireless challenges because their neighbors are, are talking over their wireless within their, their home. Uh, so, so yeah, you, you, you get it. Um, with a wireless router, um, gosh, we could have a whole other segment just talking about <laughs> wireless, <laughs> but, uh, but you, you are correct. I mean, um, so in, in other words, it's not necessarily a good thing that all those other networks are showing up like on your phone that you're like, what, what are all these other networks? That's not necessarily a good thing. That that's just noise being created. No, it's not a good thing. It's a bad thing. Yeah. Oh. Um. It's good to be in the sticks. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> to, to, to a certain degree, which, which by the way, we need to get you guys out to my neighborhood um, be, because yeah. one of the Quit. challenges of the homeowner show is that the internet is terrible in the studio. Um, yep. <laughs> uh, I wish I had a dollar for everyone that said that. Uh, I'd probably be living on an island somewhere at this point. But Hey, I would love to help you get to that <laughs> island. Well, so <laughs> I'd love to bring internet to your neighborhood. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. We'd love to get there. Come on. Yeah. And, and, and I'll, and I'll, I'll kind of speak to that for a minute. Like one of the things you talked about is that y'all create your own infrastructure. You're not piggybacking off of anybody else. So for example, whenever y'all came into, to our neighborhood, you had to get a certain number of buy-in from the homeowners to say, yes, we will pre-order this before you would be willing to spend the money. This, I can't even imagine how much money it takes to put down the infrastructure to lay all of that fiber cable. And just to kind of, kind of put this into perspective, um, y'all had a major problem that happened. I don't know, maybe two and a half or three months ago, um, at the corner of one Oh five and Walden road. Do you remember what I'm talking about? Oh, absolutely. Oh, yeah. It was a drilling company <laughs> that was there doing work for uh, another utility. Yeah. Another and utility company came in, started drilling without knowing what they were drilling through and drilled right through the backbone of that entire area, correct? Correct. Yeah, yep. so... That's correct. So, so let, let me put this into perspective for, for everyone. So I didn't know what happened. Everybody, like, like Nextdoor and the Facebook uh, community pages were all blowing up, Is you know, I'm... I don't have any internet. What's going on? What's going on? And, and within about 30 minutes, maybe in maybe 45, we get a text from Tacus that says, 
our our main backbone has been cut. Like they there's like a and we got a text and an email with like multiple paragraphs explaining what had happened and that they were going to get it back online as soon as possible. This took roughly, if I remember correctly, roughly six hours to fix. Um, am, am I right on that time frame? Do you remember how long it took to fix? Actually, yeah, no, that's about, about right. Um, it, 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 it went down from about 10 o'clock. 10 o'clock that morning yeah, until, was, um, until about 4.45. Yeah. Um, you know, yeah, we had, we had to replace yep. about a half mile of cable. Oh, my god! Okay. Uh, and then splice in at multiple points yeah, to, to get that back up and running. And, um, hey, y'all, yeah, hey, it just, that's you know. crazy that in six hours you got out there, you got half a mile relayed and got us back going. And then on top of that, you kind of took it a step further and like sent another email out saying, Hey, we're very sorry. You know, we're, this is not the type of service we try to, you know, we try to offer. And yet, you know, we had no control over this, you know, that sort of thing. I, I, you know, I, I can't imagine if that happened with some of these other companies, how many days we would have been without service because it, you, know, you just, you you do a great job. And, and I, I want to tell you from a consumer side, I thoroughly appreciate the fact that it only took six hours because that could have been a much bigger ordeal. And you would have had a, a lot of people complaining, obviously, over something that you had zero control over, you know? Yeah, I appreciate that. You know, I, we, we look at it as what would, you know, since we started with a clean sheet of paper, we, we look at it as, what would we want our internet provider to be like if we could start with a clean sheet and, and create a Christmas wish list? And mm. uh, that's what we've done, and we're continuing to approve on it. Um, you know, it, everyone around the office knows the saying for me is I, I hate fire drills. I'd rather get a red light than a fire drill. And that was a fire drill. Yeah. Um, yeah. You know, so to, to prevent the fire drills, uh, we um, – have been in the process and you've probably seen some of the construction building around the east side of the lake, uh, to complete a ring. So in the future, um, you know, roll forward a little bit. Uh, if that were to happen again, which God hopes it doesn't, but if that were to happen again, we get a red light. We know it was cut. You know, nothing happened. Yeah. You, you continue to be up as if nothing happened. And, uh, we don't have to, uh, to have everyone run out there to, to pull in half a mile of cable and splice in and everything else, we can, uh, you know, worry about it tomorrow to, you know, no one's down. Yeah. So we're in the process of building that. So that's beautiful. That's yeah. absolutely beautiful. Yeah. Kevin, we, yeah. Go ahead. Please. No, the, 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 no, thanks for that. I mean, I, I, just, just to give you an idea of what, um, you know, what we've done in a relatively short period of time in the Lake Conroe area, we've invested over $15 million in the infrastructure in the ground. Wow. And so as you can imagine, we, we, we treat it like our baby, right? And we treat every single customer like, um, you know, like, like it's, it's our internet connection there. And so we pride ourselves on having a, on, on, on effectively delivering to the customer as close as possible, if not even better, uh, than an enterprise grade connection into their home. And so when you say enterprise grade, that means, you know, four nines of reliability, 99.99% up all the time. And so because we know that people are working from home, we know that they are educating their children from home. And before COVID, it's the same thing. Nothing has changed for us, but frankly, the, the magnitude, the gravity of what we're offering, the service that we're giving, you know, we, we, we treat that really seriously. And to have something like that happen in the midst of a global pandemic, when people are trying to work from home, when they're yeah. trying to wrap up the school year, this is in early May, I think you're referring to. Um, yeah, that, that, that was something that, that really, um, it, 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 we had already put in motion, you know, what Hal described, you know, quite, quite frankly, we, we, we ended up probably the building the cha or one of the most challenging, if not the most challenging areas to build a fiber network, uh, <laughs> you know, in the Houston area because of all the fingers there. Right. And all yeah. the, you know, it's, it's virtually impossible unless you go across a bridge 
uh, you know, or tunnel underneath the lake for two miles up along 1097 to create a loop. And right. so how do you do that? Well, there, there are a number of different ways you can. We're putting those in motion right now. We're really excited over the next, um, over the next few weeks, next couple of months to, to, to unveil what we have planned for our customers to really complete that. So that's why we said, look, that's not the service that we set out to deliver. Yeah. Even that six hour, uh, you know, our, our eight hour downtime that we had, um, you know, as you can imagine, that's, that's just, it, we wouldn't want that for our, our homes. Uh, and I don't care what people have gotten so far and what they're used to mm. at stack is we don't talk about everyone else. We talk about what we want to deliver and we want to yeah. always be getting better, always improving. And so that's why we also gave a credit to our customers and said, look, yeah. we're going to treat you like you're a commercial customer. And if you're in a service level agreement with an enterprise great internet provider, they provide service credits during outages if they occur, right? So if they do not hit their service level agreement, you know, then you get a prorated amount. And so that's exactly what we did. We gave everyone a $5 rebate. It's, 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 you know, it it probably does not for, for a lot of folks, uh, some of them might've been impacted far more than five bucks. Um, but at least, you know, we wanted to show, look, we're going to put our money where our mouth is. We've not only invested in our network, but we've invested in you as a customer. Yeah. And we want you to know that, 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 you know, uh, that, that we take this really seriously. Well, I'll tell you this, like it, it made me, go, I, I remember I, I told Craig about this. And if you remember, I said, they've got a, they've got a customer for life out of me just for that $5 credit. I mean, it was you saying, I'm sorry, in a huge, huge way. And, you know, not only that, like just recently, um, Texas changed the tax laws for you guys. And we got a, uh, um, an email saying that, Hey, look, they're not charging internet tax like they used to. And so we're not going to keep charging you the same amount. Your bill is going to go down. It's that kind of stuff that, you know, uh, I, I think we just, we, we live in an age where, um, people try to take advantage of people any way they can. And to, to have a company that is not willing to take advantage of, but rather, say, you know what, the customer is our top priority. And without the customer, we have no company. Um, that That's the type of, of uh, company that, that I want to stick with. So, uh, you know, y'all are doing a lot of things right. And I guess I encourage a lot of people that, that don't live in this area, like, check out what your options are. You may be surprised there might be another option um, if you're not happy with the service you get. Shop around and see what your options are. Well, and, and, thanks, and, thanks for that, Kevin. And if, and if TAC is, oh, I, I was just going to say that if, and if TAC is, isn't in your area, uh, go ahead and sign up online. You show up, you show up as a very important dot on the map. And so if we see a lot of those dots in any given area, uh, believe me, I actually look at those dots every single day. Um, and, uh, and there's a story behind every single dot. And so, there are some dots and some clusters of homes that frankly does not make business sense because at the end of the day, of course, we're trying to, you know, to make a profit and, 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 and for this to be a win-win. Sure. Um, but you know, at the end of the day, if, if there are enough dots that, that, that pop up or we have homeowners associations or concerned residents calling saying, Hey, we would love to have Tacus there. Believe you me, we would love to bring Tacus to you yeah. if we can. Yeah. I, I, yeah, I one, one thing I'll add to that for those that are, Sorry. No, no, go ahead. We do not, we do not sell your information. We do not use it for marketing other than if we decide that we see, or if we see that there is enough interest in an area, then we will send you an email and say, Hey, we've opened it for signups. Other than that, that's it. So for those that are afraid to put in their information, give out their email, uh, we do not sell your information. We take privacy very seriously. And, um, the only thing that it does, it shows us that there is an interest in the area and that we should consider building there. So mm. I just thought I'd throw that out there as well. No, that, 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 that yeah. actually is probably Good helpful to out. folks to want to, to sign up to, to put that, that dot on the map. You know, I, I mean, for, for, for guys like me, I mean, I, I tell people all the time, I think when my wife and I moved in the, to the neighborhood that we're in now, we brought the median age down to around 77. Um, <laughs> And, you know, it's like these, you know, it's, it's difficult to move new technology in, into neighborhoods like what we live in, because it's, it's a little, you know, like, like you guys had kind of alluded to earlier, this is, this is kind of a difficult area because it's traditionally kind of rural, a little more country. 
than you know, like inner city Houston, anywhere north, anywhere I mean, anywhere south of 1960. It's it's a much different community than 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 those areas, even though we're kind of in the Houston area. But one of the one of the big complaints I hear from people, like in, in my neighborhood in particular, and so I'm gonna I'm gonna continue to push you guys to to get those dots up on the map is that most people say that you know they're, they're they're sort of living under these monopolistic regimes of internet providers where like you know I don't you know like even though the service sucks I only have one choice and so I've got to keep going back to these people and you know, I I can complain even though they're not going to do anything and, and I'm just kind of curious is is that kind of what you guys are are fighting against is is sort of these and I'm I'm not necessarily like saying like monopolies are are you know inherently evil or anything like that, but like that these these a lot of people just don't have any other options to to pick from. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, and, they, and especially if you're in rural areas too, um, depending on um, um, the it's called a census block, right? And depending on the area where you are. A lot of these companies, these telecom companies, are getting paid money by the government to to give the bare minimum there. And it's mm. not a knock, you know, on that. Sure. That's yeah. that's a you know, as long as they're serving you with FCC defined broadband, which is twenty five by three, they're eligible to collect that money. But as with all those, it's 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 nameplate capacity, right? Mm-hmm. In a vacuum. But then you start putting people on the network, and you know, it, suddenly it bogs down. But but yeah, I mean, we're um, there are options. I mean, a lot of people don't realize in a lot of these areas, or in fact, uh, all across the United States, they have a quote unquote monopoly, but they also have access to satellite TV. I actually come from the satellite TV world, um, or excuse me, the satellite broadband world. Um, okay. And, um, and so you, you, you can actually get, um, you know, 25 by three. Now, granted, if, you know, if a strong storm comes through, uh, <laughs> it's, it's, it's probably going to interrupt the signal, but Quite frankly, the outages are 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 far less. Okay. Right. They might be a little bit more intermittent, uh, but the outages are far less there. Uh, in fact, I'm 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 also a co-founder of a company that's delivering um, a satellite. We're actually launching a satellite next year up uh, in Alaska. Talk about one of the most challenging regions, you know, in the United States to do that. But it, satellite internet works, and you know, if you if if your only option is a 10 megabit per second DSL connection, a 10 by one connection, which is very common for DSL. Um, quite frankly, you can get a 25 to 50 megabit per second satellite internet connection and, Mm. and, and pretty much cut the cord, um, and have better, you know, better speeds. It it comes with its own challenges, but it's, it's, you know, it at least is another option that's, it's always up there. So just, just for what it's worth. Sure. Well, and and that, that kind of leads me into, uh, a, a little bit of what we wanted to talk with you guys about. I mean, because like we are, we are in the middle of, you know, having our kids be at home for school. Everyone's having to be on their own device. You know, mom and dad need a break, you know, to, to Netflix and chill or, or what, whatever it is. I mean, like, so like we're, we're using the internet more probably than we ever have in the history of the internet, which I mean, like was, was probably going to happen just because of, you know, progress and in, 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 in technological progress. But like, what are some tips that you guys might have for folks at home, you know, aside from, you know, obviously signing up for Tacus, you know, what, what are some tips in order to make that experience better at home for people? And I, I think I've heard one already, which is like hardwire as much as you can. Um, what, what might be some other suggestions that you guys have for homeowners to, to better improve their internet speeds at home? I think I think you heard also what Al said earlier about about investing in the hardware too, right? So in addition to hardwiring, you know, you get what you pay for generally Mm -hmm. within that fifty to you know five hundred dollar range that Al mentioned earlier in this call or earlier in this in this podcast. And so that's definitely something else you can do. Okay. Yeah, that's what I was going to say. Hardwire what you can invest in uh, decent for for what you can't hardwire. You've got to go wireless. So. Invest in a decent wireless uh, mesh system, uh, some you know, some of the Eero or Eero Pro mesh. Um, uh, there, you know, there there's some other things you you have to consider, like 
you know, a stucco. If you ever seen a stucco home get built, it almost looks like chicken wire that they put up yep. before they put the stucco on. Mm-hmm. Uh, those are the worst because <laughs> those are like little antennas inside the walls uh. that just interfere with the service. So maybe buy two Eero Pros, you know, <laughs> just to cover that house. Hal, uh, you are you are singing you know, singing my love language right now, man. You you and I could probably riff on stucco homes for a couple of hours, my friend. <laughs> <laughs> is your stucco by chance? <laughs> it is not. No, my, no, no. no. Okay, if if yeah. you've if you've listened to any old episodes, like my house is weird, but it is not stucco, so it has its own issues, okay. though. <laughs> <laughs> But yeah, you know, those are the things uh, that you can do to, to help. Um, another thing that, that you can do is if you don't want to spend the money on an Eero Pro system, spend four or $500 on it. Um, I, I'd suggest, the problem is I was going to say suggest getting someone who knows how to configure wireless properly mm-hmm. out of the box. Uh, most routers are set at the slowest setting. Oh. You can get... Uh, you know, more devices on uh, wireless at the same time. Um, again, I'm kind of going down the, the technical path of wireless, which, like I said, I could do a whole show on that. But um, <laughs> get someone who knows how to configure them properly. Right. Because if you have just a handful of devices, there's some changes you can make to it to, to, to significantly speed up your, your, your throughput on the wireless side. Mm. Uh, but, you know, th- those, those are just a few things I, I can think of. Um, and if, if you're with you Tacus, know, and, do you do you guys have uh, techs and, and, and help desk people that can can help you do that? You know, we do to an extent. Um, we focus on on providing fast, reliable internet service. Right. Not being uh, all things to all people tech. Right. Related. Uh, you know, our, our technicians will 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 do what they can to help as much as they can. Right. But, you know, there, there's a point where, you know, they, they've got to kind of hand that off to someone else. And um, we, we just launched our new website on Friday of last week. Mm-hmm. And uh, we're really revamping. We had, we had a, the old site had an integrators page where uh, our customers could recommend uh, IT, IT people mm-hmm. uh, to help. And we post them on that page and there was a rating system where the customers could go in and rate them if they've used them and put in blurbs about, you know, their experience with them. Um, I, you know, uh, uh, Takis goes, we don't really want to recommend any particular one because we may have 10 that are great, 10 that are awful. We just don't know. Right. And don't want to, uh, you know, make a bad recommendation that could reflect poorly on us. So we're, we're, we're trying to build this ecosystem where our customers can kind of, uh, you know, rate these integrators. I use the analogy of if you want to buy a set of headphones on Amazon, you're not going to call Amazon and ask them which ones they recommend. <laughs> you're going to go do a search and find out what all these people have, have you know, rated and, and reviewed and, and make your decision based on that. So that's what we're trying to build. And, uh, you know, in the meantime, uh, while we're, we're revamping that piece of the site, uh, you know, customer service and tech support should be able to, to you know, give you a list of those names that you can, you know, make a decision on your own uh, right. as far as which one to go. Um, but, but yeah, I mean, you know, we we tell our folks do what you can uh, as much as you can, but it, but at some point you've got to have someone that that they can hand that off to. Yeah, and and it's probably it's probably not difficult to to find someone in your area with a with a simple Google search to to find someone that can can help you with that or, or maybe a, a YouTube video or two. Um, yeah, post post something on next door. You'll get five hundred responses with five hundred different names. Absolutely, yes, yeah. And uh, I was. I, car- <laughs> I was going to, I'm going to circle back around to something that that Kevin was talking about earlier with, you know, kind of looking over the, the well-being of your kids while they're at home and they're, they're on the internet, which, you know, it sort of exposes them to a certain degree, uh, to, to certain elements of society and, and, and different things like that. And there was, there was a news story I was reading and Carter, I think you'll, you'll kind of appreciate this. I think you were telling me earlier, you used to, uh, to host a, a show about current events, uh, a news story I was reading earlier earlier today was this psychologist who was commenting about a new Cardi B song, which I'm, you know, apparently she's a musician, um, that 
Mm. You know, it had some inappropriate. That's up for debate. That, <laughs> it's right. Had some inappropriate <laughs> lyrics that apparently a lot of kids were listening to, and this the psychologist was giving some tips as to like how to you know, talk to your children about these lyrics that they're, you know, potentially hearing on this new Cardi B song. And I I think, I think articles like that would, you know, sort of concern a lot of parents as to like what they're exposing their children to by allowing them to be on the internet for, you know, school that they also have access to things like YouTube and, you know, iTunes and music and streaming and all the, all these different things that they can sort of wander into. Um, you know what what are what are some ways that you know and obviously there's a, there's a multitude of things and, and this this may not be like your your area of expertise but like what what are some ways that you guys know of right off right off bat that we can help you know protect our children from certain elements of the internet because we know that there, there's not great elements out there um you know Al, as you mentioned probably know more about this tonight a little bit, um, you know, as you mentioned, many of the, uh, the, the wireless devices, wireless mesh systems, routers have, um, you know, if, if you, if you spend a little more than your, your, your 50, $60 on a router, um, they'll have those, some of those services built in, you know, just like you mentioned, Kevin, with the, um, the Euro system, um, one, and, and I, I'm not, promoting or recommending it, um, not, not, not for any reason other than, you know, I don't want someone to go buy it and say, well, you know, how attack it said it was great and, uh, it right. worked for me, but I'll say that, um, uh, I, at my, I have a, I have two daughters, uh, 10 and 12. Okay. And, um, you know, they're right in the thick of, of that age. Yeah. So, uh, I have a device called a Disney circle, yep. um, that, uh, may not be for everyone, but it works well for us. Yeah, we we've and uh, it has all the we've talked about those before, yeah. and they again, if you're looking for a content filter, it does a pretty good job. Yeah, I mean, I I like it because you can set limits. You can you know set the uh, you know one of the things I really like is you can set rewards. Yeah. Uh, yeah, you know, if they do certain things, you can turn the internet on and off. You can block uh, you know, specific applications. Um, you can pause the internet. Uh, you know, it, it gives us the control that that we need um, to to you know do the best job that that we can to to keep them out of trouble. Um, yeah. You know, kids are resilient and uh, creative, and uh, you know. Uh, I hope they don't find a way around it, but thus far it's worked. Um. <laughs> well, it, and like, you know, again, like you're not, you're not necessarily promoting that, that device, but the fact that like the CEO of a internet providing company has a device like Disney circle for his kids at home should speak volumes to everyone listening to this episode right now. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's, it's a device to check out and make your own decision. Um, you know, as I mentioned, it's, it's well, it's worked well for me and, uh, they, you know, I, I could hit the pause button. Well, uh, they, they're probably in bed right now, given the time, but <laughs> you know, if, if we had done, done, if I, if I had demonstrated at the beginning of the show, if I hit the pause button, you'd hear two screens, uh, <laughs> ah, the internet, oh, you know. <laughs> so, uh, we, yeah. we have similar tantrums in our home yeah. as well. Yeah, yeah. definitely. Yeah. Well, uh, you know, we, we've covered a lot. Um, is there anything about Tacus that we haven't covered that you think, uh, our listeners may be interested in hearing? Uh, two, two things I think I'd, I'd mention, um, is, uh, cause we get asked this a lot or we see comments on it. Uh, you know, Craig, I believe you mentioned, uh, I don't know if it was Craig or you, Kevin, that, that mentioned, um, you know, we open areas for signups. Um, we do, uh, we do take a, a $20 signup fee, uh, when we do that. And, and to be very clear, that's just to make sure there is a demand. It, it keeps the 15 year old gamer from going out and signing <laughs> up, you know, 500 or a thousand of his neighbors, uh, and, you know, hoping that we come build it. So it's just, it, it's a small commitment, um, that we ask of, of the residents within the neighborhood, uh, so that we can make a, a large commitment within the neighborhood. 
Um, you know, anytime we have an area that's open for signups, um, we have a goal that we need to reach to make it make sense. And if we reach that goal, we build it. If we don't reach that goal, then we refund everyone's money. We're not out to take anyone's money. It's mm. solely just as a, a validation to make sure there's a true demand. So a deposit, there's that. If you will. And then the other thing, you know, yeah, exactly. And, you know, it goes towards your first month service. So it's, it's, it's not, um, it's not that you're losing the money. It's just, it's just a confirmation that, Hey, you, you really want us to come build it. Yeah. And, uh, we want to make sure it, you're it a person. Us, uh, yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Uh, yeah. You know, and um, you know the the way we look at it is, once you're installed, you know there, there's no contract, there's no uh, no cancellation fee. It's a month to month service, and um, we have no intention of ever raising rates. Uh, as you've seen, the rates have gone down, not up. That's right. And um, you know, I just, I, I, I just hopefully. Uh, uh, for those that are like, who's Tacus? I've never heard of this company. They're just another shady uh, internet or, or, or you know, telco provider. Um, we're really trying to change that perception. Yeah. And, um, you know, we, we appreciate you giving us this opportunity. And, and Kevin, you being a customer, and uh, glad you're enjoying it. Yeah, absolutely. Most definitely. Yeah, thanks, Kevin. Sure. Well, uh, we like, like I said um, before we started this, we cannot let you get away without – Going through something we call our <laughs> final four. The final four. That's right. Final four questions we ask each one of our guests. So we're going to go through each one of them. We'll try to make it speedy because I know we've been doing this for a long time. Uh, Hal, we are going to start with you. How about that? Yeah, you guys, uh, you, you guys might be setting the record for like longest uh, homeowner show episode, and like it, it, <laughs> yeah. it doesn't feel like it, but it, like it's 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 creeping up there for sure. Yeah. It's, such good information, man. I mean, I, I think we this is going to be a well downloaded episode, I believe. So, um, here, here's the first question: How we're going to start with you? What's the must have tool you won't leave your house without? Um, you know, I I, I want to be give you the cliche answer and say it's a it's my cell phone, uh, <laughs> but I think that's a given. Um, I. I'm not going to stray too far from that answer, and I'm probably going to say my Apple Watch. <laughs> oh, okay. There you go. All right. We we actually have not uh, gotten an Apple Watch before, but I think that's actually a pretty good answer. I agree. I, I've actually been using... Yeah, I, I'm a wife. I use the flashlight function on mine a ton now. Wow. Yeah. Uh, you know, I'm not familiar with that function. I've seen it on there. I haven't used it. I'll, I'll have to check it out. Yeah, it's... it's, it's at, well, I mean, like, I don't know how many addicts you crawl around, but like for me, it's... It's really helpful. <laughs> I used to climb around a lot when we first started, uh, you know, but, but hopefully my days of climbing around is, is far behind me. There you go. If you've got 50 um, plus yeah, employees, you've got plenty of other people to crawl around the right. attic for you. Exactly. But, you know, if they need my <laughs> yeah, help, yeah, but, I'm available. But, but, but Kevin, we've got a, yeah, Kevin, we've got to hold Hal back sometimes. So he he interested to get out there in the field. He and wants I to go. <laughs> <laughs> All right. We can't have our CEO uh, do that. <laughs> no, That's right. No, that's right. Well, Carter, how about you? What's a must-have tool you won't leave your house without? Gosh, I, I would say my wallet, <laughs> 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 because then I I can I can get whatever I need uh, after uh, you know as I leave the house. And there I, you I go. That's just. Just because I wear the I wear the CFO hat at at, at TAC is um, you know uh, having cash on hand is always always on my mind. Yeah, yeah, definitely. All right, cool. Second question: What's a job you've walked away from? How we already gave you the disclaimer. I'm going to let you go whichever way you want to with this. But what's a job you walked away from? Probably the most memorable one uh, was April seventh, two thousand. It was the the last day I was employed by someone. Oh. Um, and you know that was a, you know I was standing at the cliff looking over the edge, and I took the leap. And I thank God yeah. every day that uh, I did. Amen. Uh, you know, it led me here tonight. And um, you know that was probably the uh, the scariest, uh, hardest decision for you to make. And. Uh, it it uh I can't say that it's it's been fantastic and without any sort of uh turmoil, but uh, you know as as Carter knows this phrase well, if if uh if it was easy everyone would do it. Yeah. yeah. 
That's right. But, That's right. You know, but for those that are considering it, uh, making the leap, especially in this this uh, global pandemic with the job market the way it is, uh, there's not a better time, in my opinion. That's right. So yeah. Give it a shot. All right, Carter, you're up. What's a job you've walked away from? <laughs> Kind of a similar story, Kevin. Um, I, uh, I I've been kind of on the entrepreneurial side of the of the financial world for several years, uh, but, but but you know had the um, the pleasure of co-founding several different companies. Obviously, Tacus, um, you know, it's one that I'm just I'm, I'm I'm over the moon over. But back in back in 2014, I had left my previous job at a at a at a um, uh, a financial advisory firm in Houston and had co-founded a energy technology company, um, uh, here, uh, the, and, and we capitalized the company with a little bit of, a little bit of equity that we had raised, um, in March of 2014. And, uh, you know, as those in the oil and gas sector will, will remember well that the bottom kind of fell out, um, uh, in the price of oil, in June of 2000, <laughs> June, July of 2014. And so I went for about a year and a half, um, you know, as a pure entrepreneur, I'd always kind of talked about it and always worked with, uh, you know, entrepreneurs before, but I'd never done it myself. Uh, and, you know, unpaid, mm. uh, struggling. And, um, and then I made the decision at the very end of, t- of 2015, uh, we had just had our second, second child at that point, my wife and I had, and, um, and then I left that job and I figured, you know what, I'm already scraped in the bottom of the barrel. So why don't I start my own firm, uh, and, and actually put into practice the, you know, the financial world and the entrepreneurial world, uh, together. And, and that's actually because of that, I started my own firm called Continuum of Technology Capital. And that's how Hal and I met. Mm, okay. Cool. Very cool. Awesome. Yeah. All right. Next question. Number three, how do you wind down at the end of a long day, Hal? Is adult beverage an appropriate answer? Absolutely. (laughs) Yes. No, I want to get wound down. (laughs) I'm winding down right now, Hal. (laughs) All right. right. I wish I could say I was joining you, but, uh, we'll, we'll save that for a later date. Um, yeah, for a later date. Um, yeah, I mean, you know, on occasion, I might have a glass of wine or something like that. But uh, my, my, I'm fairly boring. Um, <laughs> my end of day unwind. Uh, I, sh- I have a, an iPad that I, I will either read, uh, you know, go to just meaningless websites to read stuff that doesn't matter, or <laughs> sometimes I'll do, uh, I'll, I'll do, re- you know, just technical research on, on, you know the industry to, to kind of see what's going on. Um, any of which, uh, will bore me enough to make me go to sleep. So, um, <laughs> yep. that's, uh, I, I would say I, I read a lot, but, um, I, uh, I, I just, uh, I can read two pages and either I have to go back and reread those two pages or I just fall. Yeah. So I'll yeah. do audio books, but, uh, that, that's, that's, you know, Kind of the boring answer. Uh, <laughs> well, no, I'm actually, I'm actually in, in, intrigued. What's, what's in the queue in the audio books these days? Um, you know, I don't read for, for I don't really read fiction. Um, I, uh, uh, there, there's a, you know, and, uh, a guy that, uh, that I've kind of been reading a couple of his books uh, named Simon Sinek. Oh yeah, I love Simon. Uh, who I find find yeah find find interesting. Uh, so I've, I've read a couple of his books recently. And um, which one did you finish you know, most have, recently? Uh, um, begin with why. Yeah, dude, that's a fantastic book. Yep. And, so um, yeah, it's, I'm I'm anticipating it's, reading. It's, I know, think it's a Leaders Eat Last. I think is the most recent one that's come out. Um. Yeah, I haven't started it yet, but I'm I'm really interested in in, in you know consuming that one. <laughs> That's right. I can be punny. <laughs> okay. Nice. Nice. Take- <laughs> hey, all right. Moving on, Carter. How do you wind down at the end of a long day, buddy? Well, I, I've got a little bit of a commute. Uh, fortunately, it's a it's a reverse commute down from the woodlands at our headquarters here in Tackett's to um, 
you know, to, to my home, the gallery area. But, um, what I love to do is to try to make the dinner, uh, with mm. the kids. We've got, we've got three kids now. My, my oldest Owen is, is eight years old. He just turned eight last week. And one of his first questions that he always asks, um, to me when I sit down with him at the table is, is, Hey dad, how many, how many installs of Tacus have today? <laughs> um, and so it's That's always, awesome. it's always tons of fun. Yeah. It's always tons of fun to, to talk and, and, and hear about their days. And, and even, you know, as, as every, as any entrepreneur, it doesn't matter if you have, it's just you or if it's, you know, leading a team, um, and, and, you know, a, a large team, we all have the same challenges, the same struggles, mm. but family just puts it all in perspective. Yeah. Um, yeah. and you know, it just, just the ability to kind of step back. That's, that's when I begin to unwind. Unfortunately, um, you know, my, Getting home is is a little bit later and later uh, these days, just with everything else, all the other exciting things happening at Tacus. But, um, but that's something that really I hold, you know, I hold really near and dear to. And uh, if there's, uh, you know, there's only one thing that I will, you know, uh, uh, that I just won't sacrifice in this family. Mm. Yeah, well, good. That's uh, that's a good place to be, Craig and I. Craig and I definitely toot that mm-hmm. horn as much as possible. So we're behind you on that one, hundred percent. Um, yeah, you, 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 you have to be intentional about it, right? Because it's one of those do. things that you can, you can issue and it's really easy to do that, to put that aside. But if you don't make it a priority, it's not going to happen. Yeah. But yeah. I mean, even this right now, I mean, here it is, I mean, it's late uh, in the evening and, and we're Greg and I are kind of just like, look, we're not going to do anything until our kids go to bed. I mean, we're, we're, a lot of times we start our podcasting after our kids go to bed because they're important. And so, um, we don't, we don't want them to ever feel less than, um, cause we, we both work, we got jobs. And so, um, you know, kind of is what it is. All right. Last question. You're through the home stretch. Here we go. Number four. Number four. What's, there you one, go. Of the, what's one of the best pieces of wisdom or advice that you've ever received? Hal? Wow. Uh, I've received a lot. Um, uh, I've been very blessed to get to know, uh, some great people, some great business leaders, and uh, you know, I've, I've paid attention and listened, and uh, had a lot of really good advice. But um, probably the one that resonates most with uh, with what you know I've been doing for the last you know decade or so is um, you know focus on the customer experience. Uh, and this isn't really advice that someone told me; it's just you know, I kind of pick it up, I guess, is, um, you know, focus on the customer experience. Don't worry about the money. Mm. Um, don't worry about the technology, focus on the the customer first, you know, and, and, and think about, you know, what that should look like and, uh, wrap the tech around that. Um, and by doing that, the money just going to naturally happen. Mm. Uh, And, and that's, you know, that's probably the best advice because that's, that's what we're doing today is, you know, um, yeah, we, you know, we're a company that we're not a, not a charity or nonprofit. Um, <laughs> but you know, we're, we're, we're out, we're out to, uh, to, you know, keep happy employees and, you know, acquire the, the best talent possible and retain them. And that costs money. Yeah. Uh, so, you know, we've got to, got to make a dollar here and there. But uh, that's not our primary focus. Primary focus is, you know, the, the end user experience is to and, and make that uh, the best that it possibly can be today and uh, improve on it tomorrow. So, you know, best advice uh, is, like I said, focus on the customer and the customer experience uh, and uh, wrap the tech around it and, and don't worry about the money. Money will happen naturally if you do those first two things. So it, it, just cool. just real quick, am I hearing you right? You say, are you saying wrap the tech around it? Yeah, like take the take the customer experience and figure out how you can make the tech fit around that experience. Don't okay. don't take a technical product or service and and say, okay, this is it. Hope the customer likes it. Right. Start with the customer first. Awesome. Yeah. No, I just want to make sure I heard yeah. you right. That, that's awesome. Yeah. All right, Carter, you're next. What's one of the best pieces of wisdom or advice that you've ever received? Yeah, that's, that's another, that's a, that's a really tough parting, parting question here. <laughs> I, I would say it's slow down. Mm. I would say it's slow down. Um, and it's ironic that we're in a, 
you know, that I've co-founded a company that's so focused is, is on bringing speed fast, you know, the <laughs> fastest we can get speed up and all that. But, but, but ironically, it's, it's actually about finding time. Right. And mm-hmm. so when Hal talks, I uh, talked earlier uh, in this episode about the user experience, do you want to be waiting or do you actually want to be in control, you know, of yeah. your life? Yeah. Um, and, you know, and so especially as we're speeding up as a company, as we're growing, expanding and pressing on the accelerator, I'm, I'm also, and I'm sure Hal has found this as well, you know, we're blessed to have just an amazing team that allows us to leverage ourselves mm. and allows, allows us to, you know, less, less load is concentrated on any one person. So it really allows you to take a step back gain perspective and slow down a bit. Uh, and you know, I also slow down with prayer. Um, you know, other people do different ways. I slow down by, you know, working out in the morning uh, as well, kind of having, you know, alone time. Uh, and so it's, it's, you know, that's what it's all about. It's about kind of, um, I think that's really how you gain your perspective and, yeah. and make sure that, that life just doesn't consume you because you know what, if you allow it to, it's going to. Yeah. yeah. Definitely. Yeah, yeah and Carter, that's why I, Carter and I make a fantastic team. Man, I, there I, is no Florida Mike. There is no Florida Mike accelerator. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I'm, I'm right there with you that's because right. I think I think a lot of people, you know, will will tell you that I don't have time for that, even though they say that they would r- completely recognize that the thing that they're avoiding is the thing that would probably be the most healthy for them to be engaging in. You know, and so the the yeah, best thing well, they could do is to slow down and and participate in those things, whether it be working out, whether it be praying, whether it be meditating, whether it be you know focusing on a good diet, all the, all those different kinds of things. Just to take the time and slow down would just increase their ability to speed up the other aspects of their life further on down the road. So that, that that's a good word, man. Yeah, it's 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 kind of like what my wife you know says to me. She's <laughs> she's so amazing. But she says, it's not that you didn't have the time to do it, it's that you didn't make the time. There you go. It. So yeah. Again, it goes back to, and it, it goes back to intentionality, right? Yeah. Yeah. Intentional with your family. You'll make it happen. You'll find ways to carve out time. And so that's just, that's what it's all about. Yeah. I, I tell people all the time, yeah. listen, you make time for things that are important and you don't skip those things. And so at the end of the day, what you're telling me you don't have time for is something that you just don't find important. Mm. And so- if you find it important, you'll find time for it. So, um, so yeah, that's a, that's, that's good, good stuff for sure. For sure. Well, we, yeah, uh, might we, have some other advice. Yeah, enjoy please. the journey. Don't, don't focus so much on the, on the goal. Enjoy the journey. Mm. Yeah. Oh boy. That's, yeah. that's yeah. for sure. <laughs> it's got a lot well, to tell you. Be, <laughs> man. Yeah. And, and, and that's the thing, like there's bumps in the road, man. I mean, there's potholes and there's, you know, there's obstacles and all that kind of stuff. But at the end of the day, like, are, are you making positive headway? And if not, like what, what stood in the way? Are you enjoying what you're doing? And if not, find something else. Um, yeah. Yeah. So. yeah. Both, both Hal and I have some very, um, you know, formative entrepreneurial experiences <laughs> that define where we got to today. It's kind of like, yeah. you know, one of the first things I said to Hal was, I, I don't partner with any entrepreneur who hasn't already failed. Mm. <laughs> right. Because I don't want you to fail with me. Right. That's and right. I'm not, I'm not here to fail with you. And so let's, let's take what we've learned to date and let's, you know, let's, let's, let's make something of it. Sure. Um, but yeah, we are the sum of all of our parts and we cannot, we can't help it. And so embrace it. It is all about the journey. Use yeah. the bad for good. Yeah. yeah. And that's good stuff. Y'all are, uh, very wise men. I, I, I appreciate y'all taking the time to share those uh, bits of wisdom with us. But believe it or not, there's a secret fifth question that Craig always pulls out. So that's right, and it's because <laughs> it's the only question I can remember. It's true. It's true. <laughs> <laughs> and and the the question is is probably the most important of the show is if people want to find out more about Tacus, where can they go? Uh, my, my answer would be website, Facebook. Um, you know, I wish I could Next say time. town hall because we're unfortunately can't do those today, but right. you know, normally when we, when we go in a neighborhood, we try to try to find a, a place to do those, to talk more about it. And uh, those aren't occurring today for obvious reasons, but what, what, uh, what is say, that website know, address to, real quick? Oh, tac, tacus.com. Okay. 
T A C H U S dot com. Um, and we'll link that all and, that up uh, in the show course, notes. You know, you're, you, uh, of, of course, you know, your, your podcast, the homeowner show. There you go. Yeah. That's it. That's it. Exactly. Exactly. That's the best place to get tack his information. But you know, absolutely. Other than that, go to the go to the website. It's going to be in the show. You've got, you've got you've got two hours of unfiltered uh, tack his info here. On the that's show. Right. So we, we we appreciate that. No, <laughs> well, I mean like yeah, absolutely. It, it's mutually beneficial, guys. I mean that's one of the reasons we do this too. It's like absolutely. Like you're you're, you're you. getting information out to people. Um, in a way that I mean, you're just not going to spend two hours on the phone with a, with a customer most likely, but this is an opportunity for them to essentially have gotten two hours on the phone with you to fully understand what you do, why you do it, how you do it, what makes you different um, and all of those sorts of things. And and at the end of the day, that that's a big part of why we do what we do. So yeah. thank y'all for taking the time uh, to, to talk, call in, talk with us today, spend your time um, kind of explaining a, a subject that I think everybody in the world, they have to have this. It's yep. just how are we going to get it? And even when we get it, we don't even necessarily know what we have. So uh, I think this is a very um, a very informational podcast, and I think it's something that that's going to be really beneficial. So thank you both for taking the time. Uh, we look forward to seeing, I specifically as a customer, look forward to seeing <laughs> what all you do in the future. Um, I'm excited to be on the train and uh, look forward to to kind of being on the journey with you guys. Thanks, Kevin. Thanks, Thanks Greg. Greg. It's, it's been an honor uh, being on your show and 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 congratulations on your on your great success today. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. Well, Thank listen, you guys. Um, if if uh, you haven't already are uh, out there, uh, go ahead and subscribe to the podcast. Thank you for uh, all of you that are frequent listeners. Uh, tell a friend about us go rate us and review us man that would be awesome and uh, go find us on YouTube even though Craig and I are ugly that's right you 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 can see us if you want to go find us on YouTube um, we're on all your major podcast platforms as well so come find us thank you for listening to the show uh, we're here every single Tuesday and until next time we will see you later see you